is the Harley Davidson Softail Street Bob 114 a good beginner bike? Let's hop on and find out. Alright everybody, what is up? What is up as always? Thanks for stopping by to another video today. We're out on an early morning ride on the 2022 Harley Davidson Street Bob. And today it is finally time to answer a question that a lot of you guys out there have been asking me about the Street Bob for a while now. And my apologies, I haven't been able to get around to it because I haven't been able to do much riding lately, man. This weather has been just absolutely terrible. We're getting rain every day from like the end of April to early May. Just busy and rain and all this and now I just haven't been able to ride as much as I want to. But I think the weather is finally turning now. We got a lot of good sunny days in the forecast. Oh, what do we got going on here? A little market setting up? What's this little market show or something? Who knows? Philly's always got stuff going like this on the streets. But anyways, that question that I've been meaning to get around to answer for all you guys is the Harley Davidson Street Bob 114 the soft tail, a good beginner bike. And I think there could be a lot that kind of goes into the answer of that question. Obviously, you know, what defines a beginner, you know, the actual specs and specifics of the exact bike you're talking about. But I think with my experience of the bike so far, I think I will be able to give a pretty good, clear answer on my opinion anyways, of my experience so far with the bike and how I would or would not recommend this to kind of like varying degrees of beginners, I would say. And of course, Kelly Drive is shut down because that's just what Philly does. There's always events and stuff going down on the best road to ride on. So we're going to have to take a little detour. And so, like I said, when we think about answering that question, is the Softail Street Bot 114 a good beginner bike? I'm just going to get right to it and say, in the simplest sense, my opinion and my answer right off the bat would generally just be no. I would not recommend this bike to a beginner per se there's about several different reasons why probably about three that i'm going to go over in just a little bit as to why i would not recommend this bike to a beginner now i know everybody out there may agree may disagree let me know your experiences on whatever bikes you started with i know a lot of people will say oh you could jump right on whatever bike you want which i guess in a sense i mean you could it all depends on the bike it all depends on the confidence level of the beginner rider stuff like that i would say typically for the most part as a beginner you're probably going to want something with a little less power you're going to want something that's light nimble something that you can really get a feel for you know the the real technical skills of riding all the stuff that you want to build up along the way it's going to just be easier for you to do those types of things on a little bit of a smaller bike but like I said, that's not for everybody. You might have people wanting to start right off on a uh, big old huge bagger, I guess. <laughs> that's your choice, I suppose. But like I said, I, I look at this in kind of like layers as to, you know, are you a true beginner? Like right off the bat, absolutely no experience at all whatsoever. Like I'm talking fresh out of an MSF course or never ridden like a street bike or really at all or whatever, anything like that. Like maybe just a really straight up true true beginner like under a hundred miles like literally no experience no time at all for that type of rider i just have to flat out say no this is not a good beginner bike for that type of rider now again when we add some of those layers to it you know i've been riding for five years now and i would still say in comparison to total life scheme <laughs> that's probably still kind of a beginner too but you know five years that's you know you got some good riding time under your belt but and when you add another layer to that and you say you know are you a beginner but you do start to have some experience on some other bikes you know you've worked through a few bikes at this point i would say you've got you know about a thousand miles seat time you've built up a lot of that confidence and skills if you're that type of beginner looking to switch into this bike i would then say yes absolutely 100 percent go for it this is a bike it's pretty manageable for someone who's got experience but like i said i wouldn't necessarily recommend it for just a totally totally brand new beginner you get some of that seat time 
you know, if you're in the Harley family, you know, you build up some of that seat time on like a Sportster or something, all those skills are just gonna run, translate right into this bike. You're gonna have a great time with it. There's so much more power. It's so much more nimble, the handling, the comfort, all that stuff. If you're that type of beginner where you've got some experience under your belt, go ahead, get yourself a Harley Street Bob 107 or 114 soft tail version, whatever you like best. But then we got to circle back to that very, very beginner, brand new beginner, because like I said, I've had people message me, drop some comments down on YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff, message me. They say, you know, I'm just getting into riding. Like, would you recommend your Street Bob to a brand new rider? And like I said at the beginning, I gotta be honest, I really don't think I would recommend this for a brand new beginner. Let me know if you guys disagree with me out there. Obviously, anybody out there on, you know, Dyna's soft tails, they're all gonna be pretty similar. Let me know what you guys think. Are they good beginner bikes? I'm talking brand new, brand new beginner. Drop some of your comments and experience down there. Let me know what you think, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why I wouldn't necessarily recommend this exact Harley Davidson for a brand new beginner. And the first one I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna say not good for a beginner because of the power of this bike. Obviously the Milwaukee 8 114 engine, it's a beast, man. Yeah, there's bigger engines out there. You know, it's not like a big, quick, fast horsepower machine, but just kind of the torquiness and twitchiness of this motor, I would say be very, very cautious when pr approaching it as a beginner because it can be a little twitchy at times with all that torque, you know? I mean, you know, you crack this thing coming out of a turn or from a stop, you might cut the back tire loose, you might go a little squirrely around a turn or something if you're not familiar with how to operate the throttle and the clutch and things like that. So the power is definitely one. So again, if you're talking power that you want to kind of look at as a beginner, you know, you're thinking maybe if we're, if we're talking in the cruiser market, again, that's mostly what we talk about here on this channel's cruisers, but you know, if you're looking at a beginner cruiser, I would say look somewhere around like 500 to, you know, 900 cc's maybe. Obviously the Sportster's 883, 1200. Those air-cooled engines at that cc range are usually typically pretty easy to manage, pretty easy to learn on. Get yourself some experience there, build up those skills there. Then I would say you could probably jump right into a 114 Street Bob from there. So next up, I would say for a beginner, be cautious of the weight of this motorcycle. Obviously, all Harley Davidsons are kind of known as big, clunky, heavy, things like that. Softail Street Bob, you're coming in around, I believe, for just round number sake, I'll say, I think it's like 650 pounds. My Sportster, my Iron 1200, is about 100 pounds less than that, 550, 560. And it really does make a difference not so much from just handling the bike while riding but when you're getting on and off kind of walking it around parking it putting it in certain spots and stuff like that it's definitely noticeable so that's one thing just to be cautious of you know when you're kind of power walking and moving it around i would say all bikes once you get these things moving like they're all pretty agile and nimble weight's gonna not make too much difference while you're moving i mean some considerations like braking you got more momentum and stuff like that going forward but I would say be aware of the weight of the bike starting out as a beginner and then again you're probably gonna be fine with this weight if you already got about a thousand miles of experience under your belt you're probably gonna be fine adding you know whatever it is like 150 200 pounds to your riding with this bike and so last up finally I would say the third reason not a good beginner bike is I would say price range man this bike comes in anywhere obviously you know you've got them on the used market brand new they're about 16.5 something like that you're finding them on the used market now at this point anywhere from like you know 12 to 17 depending on locations different prices and stuff like that and honestly in my opinion for a new person just get yourself something cheap to learn on get something cheap but reliable and just learn on that thing because it's like everybody says it's not if but when you know you as a beginner you're building up those skills you're trying to learn everything it's possible that you're gonna go down in some capacity and crash this thing. And in my opinion, you don't wanna be crashing a $17,000 bike right off the bat. Again, strictly my opinion, I know some people are gonna disagree with me out there, but you know, when I started out, I bought a $5,000 bike. I was like, you know what? 
you know, we'll make sure I like riding, make sure I want to continue into it. I'll get something cheap, reliable. If I crash it, you know, something happens to it, no big deal. I just want to learn, you know, with kind of that mindset of like, you know, this thing might go down, it might get dinged up, stuff like that might happen. In my opinion, I don't want to do something like that to a $17,000 motorcycle. Again, hey, you know, that's your money out there. Do what you want with your money, but that's my money. That's that's not something that I wanted to do. After I built up those skills, you know, obviously rode the Sportster for a while. I was like, all right, I'm ready to go ahead and make this investment to the exact bike I want, spend a little more money, get exactly what I want in this Softail Street Bob. Again, this is just me, and I know there's people out there that do it, and hey, that's their choice, that's fine. I see people out there, some people say, you know, they're starting on a big, brand new bagger, 30,000, you know, street glide, road glide, something like that. I'm like, geez, oh man, I'm like, hey, if you're confident in your skills and what you can do and with your ride and stuff, go for it. But but me, I just want kind of that natural progression as a beginner, start on something smaller, work my way up, get comfortable, really build up those skills and everything. So I would say price should definitely be a factor when you're looking at a beginner bike. You know, just get yourself something small, cheap, you know, decent power so you can kind of enjoy it grow into it a little bit get comfortable but honestly for those factors you know like I said the power the weight and the price of this bike that's why I when I get asked that question I don't typically recommend this bike to beginners now like I said you've got those different levels of beginner totally brand new just I mean I just wouldn't do it man you know you got some miles under your belt you know we're talking a thousand miles you're getting up close to a thousand miles some ride time in there then yeah, I would say go ahead. All that's gonna translate very easily into this bike. It is a very easy bike to ride. You know, you, like I said, you do get familiar with the power a little bit, some of the things like that. You know, it's a little twitchy at times. You just gotta learn how to control that. But any skills you gain from riding other bikes are just gonna translate right over into this thing. You're gonna love it. You're gonna enjoy it, that's for sure. So I think that's gonna get close to wrapping this one up for now. Some of my experience with the Street Bob and when I get asked that question, that's a little bit of my response for the most part. But if you guys have any questions for me of what my experience has been like, you know, getting in on a Sportster, coming up into the Street Bob, stuff like that. If you have any more specific detailed questions on, you know, if you think you should start on a Street Bob, feel free to drop them down there. Also, let me know your experiences out there with your beginner bikes as well. You know, what did you start on and what did you get into? What are you at now? How long did it take you to build up to the exact bike that you wanted? Like I said, I know some people buy that day one. That's cool and good. Some people work their way up to it like I did. Everybody's different with their skills, their confidence, finances, weight, power, all those different factors you kind of take into consideration there. So as always, we're going to finish up this beautiful spring ride through the city of Philadelphia. As always, if you like anything we got going on here, make sure you go ahead and like this video. Drop a comment down there. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Tell them to stop by. As always, make sure you ride safe out there. It's the Moto John. We'll see you all on down the road. Peace.